My name is Bruce Baker. I'm Professor of African Studies uh, in the University of Coventry. I uh, work in the Department for International Studies and Social Science and my role is uh, both lecturing and research, supervising students and teaching on some of the courses related to global security and international terrorism. So my case study is about African policing, uh, which began as an interest about 15 years ago when I went to South Africa uh, to do a course actually on democracy. But in the course of teaching there, I became aware that policing was done by a lot of agents other than the actual state police themselves, which as a European I found uh, quite interesting and uh, revealing about the nature of the African state. And so I pursued that over the next 15 or 20 years, seeing whether that was just an exception and found to my surprise that actually in most of the world, most of the time, turns to non-state actors for their policing and security rather than the state. I think the relevance of my uh, research area has been one to bring to attention of donors and even uh, national governments themselves just what a large number of actors there are in the security and justice field. But beyond that, most African states suffer some sort of crisis as regards finances and human resources even to offer nationwide policing and justice uh, service to all their citizens. So what I've been looking at is really what is the potential for all these other actors to be utilised as a complement to the state services. And clearly some of them are very close to criminal um, protection rackets or um, undesirable people that you wouldn't want to work with. But many others I found in the course of my research across about 15 or 20 countries are people that in, in my field of work we say we could do business with. And so I suppose the relevance and impact has been donors and governments beginning to realise that state building as a project is never going to be successful in Africa in our lifetime. We're not going to be able to provide uh, a sufficient service through the state that people would want in terms of justice and security. And that we really have to look at alternative actors and bringing them on board to help deliver services as well. And that has begun to change, I suppose, in the course of my time in research. Because I, along with others, have argued that states and donors really should uh, work through these other actors as well. And that's been the big change in perhaps the last 10 years of practice. I've had the privilege of working with uh, the British Department for International Development, USAID, and a whole range of other uh, international donors who are challenging me really along the lines of, even if we could work with these other partners, how would we do it? The initial wariness of donors and governments that we don't want to touch these non-state actors because they're human rights abusers, uh, aren't aware of the um, of gender equality, those sort of issues, made them ignore them. Now they want to work with them but don't know how to work with them given the problems that they have. So if we can look at the linkages that do exist and how effective they are, then we can see whether these are people that we can draw into greater conformity with the international standards that we would desire.